So let's have a short lecture on doing parallax scrolling background. And that's just a fancy way of saying that your background has depth to it when you watch most animated projects. When something moves across the screen, you might have stuff behind the main action. That's the background. And it may look three-dimensional in terms of, or maybe 2.5D, in that it looks like things are moving in the background at different speeds. Um, the, um, the way we can do that in Adobe Animate is by having our various parts of our scene in different layers and animating them at different speeds. And when it comes together, it looks like an, a fun, interesting uh, depth to your scenery. So let's do this. In Adobe Animate, you want to create, you want to go to File New. We will set our usual 1920 by 1080. 24 FPS with some gray background so we can see through our objects. And on the left side, don't forget to select Action Script 3. You don't want Canvas, you want Action Script 3. Then I'm going to save this onto my flash drive. Um, you can save it in a new folder if you'd like. I'll just call the folder with today's date, 624. And you can just write parallax practice. You can save it as whatever you want, but uh, I'm saving it to my flash drive in its own folder and giving it some sort of name. When I do these lectures, I would recommend instead of getting too fancy, like I said, let's draw a mouse. And I saw a lot of you drawing a really cool mouse, but then you're falling behind because then you're missing what you really need to do. So the mouse could just be a circle with a smiley face. That's fine. Uh, when I do these lectures, you don't have to focus on being very detailed as the lecture goes on. The cool thing about Adobe Animate, especially when you work with symbols, is I can make just a happy face as my character, turn it into a symbol, and then later, I can edit the symbol so that the uh, graphic uh, becomes more full-featured. So I'm just going to save that. I've got layer 1, which I will name as car. I'll create another layer. Call it road. Create another layer. Call it mountain. Mountains. Another layer called moon. And another layer called trees. So you don't have to separate everything into its own layer, but to get the most control out of things, when something is an independent symbol or an independent on an independent layer, you get the most control to do your animation. So just based on the names of these layers here, you get a sense of what might be happening. So we're going to have a car driving along a road, and mountains and trees and stuff are going to pass by the screen, by the camera. And we're going to do this in terms of learning about parallax scrolling, in that the different levels scroll at different speeds, and we'll learn a few tricks to, to make it look nice. Now, actually, I want to change the order of a few things here. Um, let's put the car above the mountains and the road, and then we'll move the moon behind everything, actually. So it might not make sense completely at the moment, but it will when we put these things together. But basically the idea is, let's say I've got a camera pointed at a road, um, you know, perpendicular to it. The, the car is going to drive left to right or right to left, whatever, and the camera's pointing at it, so it's going to be perpendicular right there. So the idea is that the thing that's closest, the layer that's closest to the camera is trees. I've got the camera, then trees are going to pass by in front of the camera. Behind that, then we've got the car. So the car, um, do it from your perspective. So the camera's over here, then the trees are, next, are in front of that. Then behind that is the car. Well, then the car's on top of the road, 
and then the road is in front of the mountains, and then the moon is behind everything else. So there's a sort of stacking order to this. So first, in the, in the car layer, uh, a pro tip is that if you are going to work with a certain layer, I would recommend locking every other layer just in case so that you don't accidentally uh, make changes on something you didn't expect. And hopefully you know the trick that if you click the little lock icon at the very top column, it locks everything, and then you unlock the car. So we're going to draw a simple car. You don't have to get too fancy. I'm going to have a car driving from left to right. I'm going to start to draw the car somewhere on the left side over here. Again, I'm not going to get fancy at all. Let me see here. This is a car right here. Sure. It's like a car in the future, maybe. So just whatever. Something that looks car-ish. Somewhere on the left side. I think you, you all had a... Um, a car race assignment in part one of the class. Does that sound familiar? Did you do the car race? Okay, so I'm going to draw some form of car. It's a sleek, futuristic car. It's going to go left to right. Again, I want to fix this up that the wheels look better and that it has the bumper and so forth. I can do that later. I just want a basic shape of a car. Uh, select your drawing and then let's turn it into a symbol. To select your car, press F8 to turn it into a symbol. You can do Control A, you can drag your little selection tool. F8, we'll call this MC Car. It's a movie clip representing a car. Make sure type is a movie clip. So a simple uh, sketch with fills becomes a movie clip so that I have more control over it. I'll call that MC car as a movie clip. Now here's the illusion. The car is never really going to move. The background is going to move. The car is going to stay put here on somewhere on the left side, but the background elements are going to move. That's another way to create the illusion of movement, not the actual thing, but the background, uh, depending on what you're trying to animate, of course. So now I'm going to lock the car layer. I'll switch over to the road layer. And I'm going to draw super basic road. And then again, uh, I'm not going to get too worried about the details of it. I'm going to draw the lines in the middle of the road. Technically, drawing on the right side of the road, driving on the right side of the road. Now, when I drew this, I, I did draw my lines over the car. That's fine. They're in separate layers, so they're disconnected. That's fine. And I'm not going to worry about it that it's transparent. I can fix that later. And here's the first thing. Here's the first part of the trick think about it in terms of people will only see what's actually on the canvas. Everything outside, people will not see. So I've drawn a little bit of the road outside of the canvas, maybe a little bit behind it. Well, I'm going to zoom out enough so that I draw way more of the road. I don't know how much you need to zoom out. I had to go back to 9%. I don't think you need to go that far. But I'm going to zoom out so that I can draw way more of the road out here. This part is not visible at the moment, of course. But it's necessary because when I animate it, the road is going to move, not the car. And it'll look like the car is actually moving on the road. So zoom out some amount. You can sort of think approximately one whole canvas width, whatever that is, 1920, approximately 1920 pixels of road outside of the canvas. Draw some amount outside. And 
Then I will turn that road into a symbol. I can do Control A to select all. F8 to convert to symbol. I'll call this MC Road. So I've drawn a basic road on the road layer. Everything else is locked. I'm converting the road into a symbol. I've drawn the road approximately you know two times larger than my canvas <clears throat> there is like some tricks mathematically that you can do but I won't worry about that just yet the idea is draw more road than you will see convert that okay I'm going to lock that layer and go over to Mountains layer. I'm going to draw some mountains, you know, a little bit starting over here, some over here, and then over here, a little bit, not too far out of your, not too far out of your canvas, but draw some amount outside. So the illusion is that the camera is staying in one place and the background is moving. Well, that means I need some amount of background that, exist, that exists beyond the camera that will move. <coughs> so don't draw a mountain that is exactly the size of your canvas. Because when we move it, there's nothing to then show. Your mountain ends right there and it's blank. I'm going to go a little bit outside of it because when we move the mountain, this will cause the, uh, the illusion of movement. Just like this road, if you only drew a little bit of the road and when you animate it, it won't look good. It'll, the road will end. I've drawn enough road out there that when I animate it, it looks like it's moving. Okay, mountain also needs to be turned into a symbol. You can control A to select the whole mountain, F8 to turn it into a symbol. So after I've drawn all of this, uh, we'll pause, just in case you're not quite there. This will be MC Mountain. Drawn a mountain on a mountain layer, turned it into a symbol, MC Mountain. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, if you hadn't uh, done so yet, take a moment to mute your devices. If you haven't muted your phones and such, laptops, etc., please mute your devices. Okay, so that's been symbolized. Next, uh, I'll lock the mountain and uh, I'll draw, I'll, let's go over to the moon, moon layer. I'm going to draw a a moon somewhere on the top over here, just a classic crescent moon, something like that. Again, I can draw it perfectly a little later. But I'm going to draw a moon somewhere on my scene. I'll turn that into a symbol. Control A, Control A, F8, and then MC Moon. Lock the moon, and then finally trees. For trees, I'm going to draw some trees that are outside of the outside of the canvas. I'm going to draw some trees, and again, thinking about this in terms of there's a camera, and then there's trees, and there's the road, etc. So when you're close to something. It takes up more of the screen. So I'm going to draw some trees over here, uh, like some pine trees. 
a little bit outside of the scene. Okay, they're outside of the of the main canvas because they're going to animate drawing they're going to animate into the scene and I'm drawing them outside first and so the idea we will see in a moment things that are closer to the camera move faster things that are further from the camera move slower this is one of the one of the secrets and uh, I'll we'll uh, we'll see the details in a moment but those trees um, turn those into a symbol as well Control A on all of the trees to turn them into one symbol. MC trees. And I'll lock all of the layers. So let me pause there just to check if everyone's in the right place. This is what you need to do. You've got layers for trees, car, mountains, road, moon. On each of them, you draw something like that. Again, don't get too fancy in drawing a perfect car at the moment. You're going to fall behind. You want to draw a stick figure sort of thing for the moment, and then later on we can improve it. Uh, but do something like that. And then the main idea, also the road is far off of the canvas. The trees are definitely off of the canvas. The mountain is a little bit off the canvas, and the moon is on the scene. And then the car is somewhere on the left, the center, wherever. That's our thing for the moment. So we'll just pause right there a couple of minutes. Anyone having any trouble? Everyone have something like that? Anyone need a little help? Come on in just a moment. So this technique comes from the uh, How to Cheat in Adobe Animate uh, book that I have up here. Remember, if you want to check these books out, there's also a great chapter on walk cycles. I believe um, back on part one, uh, remember topic one, I put in some PDFs in the network folder. Some of these pages are in that folder there. Uh, but this is a book also that I would check out if you're interested, it's got some other tips on, on drawing and such, such as parallax and walk cycles and um, backgrounds and so forth. So if you want to check out any of these books, don't forget to just sign your name over here that you checked it out. You can borrow the book during class. Okay, so the idea, once again, things that are closer to the camera move faster. The opposite. Things that are further from the camera move slower. So if you keep that in mind, these trees are going to need to move past the camera fast because they're closer. The mountain is going to move slower because it's further. The furthest thing is the, is the moon because it's hundreds of thousands of miles away. So it will move very slowly. In the middle, We've got an extreme foreground element, an extreme background element. If there's a foreground background, there's a middle ground. The middle ground is then maybe the normal pace. What's in the middle is normal speed. What's closer to you, the camera, is faster. What's further is slower. So just based on that concept, you can create these, this parallax scrolling effect that things move at different speeds. To actually accomplish it, Let's say uh, we'll have this. Th let's let's say this whole scene at the moment is going to take um, five seconds of total animation. So at 120, at 120 uh, frames, five seconds to all of these frames. Um, I want a new keyframe, F6. So remember the trick. If you click and drag all of the layers at frame 120. You can select them all at once and then F6 
to give me a new keyframe. A new keyframe is there every time you want something to move or to change. Uh, a, a, a frame, F5, is there if you don't want things to change. So technically the car is not really going to change, although it's not going to be a problem. Technically, I, I would actually do the car as, as a frame, F5, and everything else is at, as F6. It, it's okay, no problem, I'm going to do them all. The car is not really going to change. But technically, and you don't have to do this, but technically, this is what I would want. That um, the trees are going to change somehow, so is the mountain, so is the, the road and the moon a little bit, but the car not really. You don't have to do that, I'll leave it all as F6. But if you think about it again, the purpose of having a keyframe is that something will change. Okay, so what I want to do first is the road. At the moment, frame one, you want to unlock the road layer. At the moment, frame one of the road starts off right here. Well, I need the road to move. I've drawn a lot of road off of the edge of the screen, so I need to move it to the left. The way I would do this here so that it's nice and, and, and aligned, instead of with the mouse, I would use the keyboard. Shift, hold down Shift, and then press left to move it to the left. So you can use the, the mouse, but you might move your road up and down, and it'll look weird maybe. So if you hold down Shift, left on the keyboard, or you can hold it down and it'll do it fast. I've moved now the road, actually wait a minute, whoops. Not on frame one, on frame 120. Sorry, undo that. So. Control Z. On frame 120, sorry. On frame one, we see the road starts here. Then on frame 120, move the road to the left. That's, that's where we needed it. On frame 120 is where we move the road to the left. Question. So the road, frame one, starts on the left. Um, frame one, it's on the left. Frame 120, now it's moved over, I guess backwards. Uh, most of the road is on the right, and then now on the last frame, most of it is to the left. OK, let, between those two frames, right click, insert classic tween. So anywhere between 120 and 1 on your road, right click. Create classic tween. So now animate will automatically tween it. It will animate it for us so that the road moves over. And you know, if you press play, you'll see that slow and steady, the road moves over. You can start to see the illusion a little bit that the car's not moving, the road is moving. Um, when I test it completely, then obviously I will not see the extra stuff. And it'll be the illusion will be even more there, right? If you press Control Enter to look, to export it that way temporarily, and it loops, um, it'll look like this. So the car's not moving, the road's moving, and it looks like some action is happening. Now, obviously, the way I drew it, you can see the jump right there when the animation starts over. If with practice. I see that I'm going to want something to loop and loop and loop and never see that when it suddenly starts over, I would have to draw the beginning 
of the road over here so that it matches the ending of the road over here. If I want a perfect loop, I needed to think about drawing the beginning of the road the same as the end of the road. So when it loops, it's a perfect loop. Don't worry about it just yet at the moment, of course, but you see what happens. Eventually you see a little jump because it starts over right there, but just something to be aware of. Okay, so let's do the mountain, something very similar. The mountain, because it's further, it's going to move less. I only drew a little bit of extra. It's not going to move too far. This one had, in five seconds, I had to move 1,920 pixels over. So it went at a certain speed. Now, in five seconds, I only need to move an extra, what is that, 200 pixels or whatever. So it's going to be slower. Frame 120 of the mountain. Again, shift arrow key. Move it a little over. Like this. So the mountain is shifting over to the left a little bit. Between frames 1 and 120, I will then create a class between. So with the uh, selection tool, right-click mountain, create classic tween. So the road is moving faster than the mountain. I can have the illusion of the mountain moving even slower by not having it move so much. I can go back to the mountain and instead of moving that far over, I could have it just move a little bit over like that. So it starts over here, it moves over here. So I didn't I didn't move it all the way completely here because the less it has to move, the slower it will happen. That road had to move a lot. It had to move, you know, 1,900 extra pixels all the way across in five seconds. Here I've only moved it, you know, now 50 pixels or something. And now it looks like the mountain is is uh, further away. See how it's moving very slowly because they're very far away. Things that are further move slower. Things that are closer move faster. So again, if I've got the mountain moving over all the way across like that, you see how that feels now. The mountains are a little closer because they're moving a little faster. We have the comparison of a moment ago. And then the, um, the trees. The trees are the trees are outside of the frame. I want to then on frame 120 move them so that they're outside of the frame also but then on the left. So they have to move from the right side to the left side and pass completely in front of the camera. Between them in between. So you see the, the trees move out of the way faster than the road, faster than the mountain. Okay, if I want it to look like the, the car is driving faster, those trees would be zooming by faster. If I want it to move even faster, watch this. If I put the tree, if I start the trees off first, way over here, and then I end the trees way over here. They have to get through a lot of pixels left and right in the same amount of time, five seconds. So this is still all five seconds. But now the trees have to move really far, you know, 
all the way from 1920 on the right all the way to negative 1920 on the left. They have to move really far in that amount of time so it animates it really fast. The mountain doesn't have to go very far at all. It starts off from the right side a little bit, it moves over to the left side a little bit, so it moves very slowly in five seconds. The road was our like starting point. In five seconds it moved the regular speed. And now when I play it like this, look at that, those trees are moving faster. They have to get across all of that x and y coordinate, or just x coordinate, um, fast. They have to move across it all in those five seconds. You can still tweak all of this. Let's say for the mountain, I'm actually going to make it move slower. So I don't want it to move very far. Now obviously it'll help you in the perspective when the drawing is more complete, everything's transparent so that's a little um, confusing there, but if you edit your, your movie clips, you, know, you can go back to your, your trees and fill in the actual colors. And because they're symbols, When you edit them in your library, they they are correct there. So now that they're not transparent, you're starting to see more real perspective. I, I can finish drawing the car. Obviously, I can see through the car, the road behind it. That's weird. I can finish coloring it in. Well, here's the trees just with the simple solid colors. And they look like simple solid, uh, they look like more like real solid things. The mountain's moving very slowly then the road, the medium speed, and then the trees even faster. Because again, the trees are the closest to the camera, the mountain is the furthest. For the moon, I could keep it like that. The moon is so far away, you're not even going to notice it. You know, you don't notice the move has moved for hours. It was over there, and then an hour later, now it's over there. So I could further animate the, the, the moon too. Probably for the moon, I would animate it upwards, right? The moon rises. Um, and just move it up just a little bit. Uh, I'll do that in a moment. Question. So when you do the uh, so when people animate, mm -hmm. so they just do like the two footsteps and then just repeat that over and over each, each frame? You could do with a walk cycle two feet moving over and over. However, that will look very choppy, very basic. Uh, if you do look at like the various books and the videos, they usually do approximately six frames. Not just, you know, forward foot, back foot, forward foot, back foot. They do six frames because there's a part where the foot is straight out like that and bent. And then the, the leg is bent again like that. So usually it's about six frames you want to do of movement. And yeah, I could have a little guy here with the legs just moving over and over, over and over. And then the background's moving. I don't have to have the guy moving. I have the background moving. But with an animation of it moving back and forth like that, and it looks like it's moving. I could do that right now with the car. I could go in and animate the tire spinning. And the car's still staying in one place, but the background's moving and it gives the illusion of movement. Let's say the moon. For the moon, this is sort of like subtle and artistic. All I'm going to do for the moon is... is a... Uh, like maybe move it up one, a couple units up because the moon rises, the sun rises, the moon sets, the sun sets. So it moves up. It moves at a curve, actually. So if you want to get really fancy, I would move it up and to the right a little bit. And then when I animate it, it's really subtle in what I've drawn here because you don't get a, a big sense of it moving. There's a lot of things going on. But what if I actually put that moon in the layer behind the mountain? 
I'd have to fill in the color of the mountain for the full illusion. But if I put that moon uh, behind the mountain, you know, it'll be rising over the mountain to give you much more of a sense of perspective. I can edit the moon and fill in its colors. say that my moon is going to rise above the above the mountain things up a little bit that the moon first started at somewhere behind the mountain. I need to color in the mountain for the full effect in one moment. But the moon is going to be behind the mountain. The five second scene is going to happen. I move the moon enough so that it uh, goes past the mountain. Up like that. The moon is rising. For the full illusion, okay, that mountain needs to be colored in. I obviously can't just really drop a color into that uh, because it's not a closed shape. So because I'm, I'm not going to see um, outside of the canvas, I can cheat. I'll show you in a moment. I need to complete the shape. If I finish drawing the shape just outside of it and just make sure it's all connected and fill in a color, you can double click it with the select tool on frame one. So your mountain, you can double click it on frame one. I'm, I'm editing my mountain symbol and all I want to do is draw just a, a simple continuation of the lines so that it connects and closes the mountain shape to drop in a color. Whatever's outside of the canvas doesn't matter because it, it won't be visible when it gets exported. What I mean here is I'll just continue to draw it outside like that and drop in the color. And then actually the order of this, the road should be above the mountain. Okay, so the mountain is moving, the moon is rising, the trees are moving. I would finish drawing the road, fill it in with a color, fill in the color of a car, just with flat colors at the moment so that there's solidness to the things. The road would be similar in terms of the road is not a complete symbol, so if I edit it, all I have to do is continue to draw the edges, you know, the closing, the closing sides of that shape. I finished closing the edges of the shape to fill in a color. 
the road, I finish closing in the, the shape of the road so I can drop in a color. And then I can go back to my symbol of the car and drop in colors there. So I, I would want to maybe rotate the tires or do other things to increase the realism. But here we've got these various layers moving at different speeds. This is the idea of the parallax scrolling background. This is one of the requirements of your project at some point you want things to move in the background or the foreground at some different speeds it's very open-ended of what exactly you're gonna do of course but you have to demonstrate that you get this idea that putting things in different layers and moving them at different speeds creates this sense of depth you see there with the basic colors filled in, if I put in some gradients or some cell shading or other things, maybe I put in music or something, I can have this, um, I can have this much more fully fleshed out. It started off as very simple little sketch lines, but because they're symbols, I can go back and further refine it. Let me pause there before we do the part about exporting, but let's pause there. Anyone need any help? Do you have something going on like this that these different things are moving at different speeds? Anyone need a little help? Now to get pretty fancy, I'll do one more little thing. Um, these symbols that you draw have their own timeline. They have their own little world of animation inside of them. So if I do something with the car, I can have the car animate um, and do its own thing on the side as well as mixing with the whole scene. Yes, you can do that anytime you want. You don't need permission. So this uh, car, uh, I'm going to have it animate uh, a little bit. It can do its own thing independently. I'm just going to have it kind of like bounce up and down a little bit, like it's you know hitting, hitting the pebbles or whatever. That'll give it a sense also that it's actually moving. Um, so you can, you can go over to your, your library and double click the car. It has its own timeline here. So. Uh, let me show you how I would do this and then I'll go back to do it. You could do just something like this. If you, if you just create new keyframes, one, two, three, and then move it a little bit, F6, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then move it a little bit up here, one, two, three. This is gonna have its own built-in animation 
And again, I'll do it in a moment. But in the world of the movie clip itself, you can do stuff here. I can animate the tires rotating. Right here, I'm just moving it up and down a little bit, like it's hitting the, the floor. Okay, once I've got it doing its own thing there, once I play it in my main movie, there it is. In the main movie, with that little bit of extra, little bouncing up and down, now it looks like it's the classic, you know, little car puttering around with all of the other pieces coming together. Then it, it looks, it's coming together. So let me go back to show you what I did there. That's just wherever you want some kind of movement. Go back. Wherever you want some kind of movement, F6. And uh, how many of you did watch that uh, 12 Principles of Animation video that I put on Canvas? Okay, good. Extra credit for you. Minus 20 points for everyone else. You want to watch those uh, videos. They're very, very useful. There's a part in there um, about the concept of, of animating in twos that every other frame, and I mentioned this before, every other frame you draw something different. 24 frames per second technically is that at every frame you draw something new. You don't have to. Every other frame, if you draw 12 different things instead of 24 different things, you still get smooth animation. So my idea here is I'm going to jump every other frame and change the car somehow. So I'm on frame 1. I'll jump over to frame 3, press F6, because something's going to change. And all I'm going to make it change is with my arrow keys, I'm just going to make it move up or down a little bit. With the arrow keys, I'll just press up three times. One, two, three. So the car just jumped up a little bit. Well, all of this movement of this you know, car moving around, bumping, it's, it's moving up and down some amount. So on frame, let's see, can I get this all at once? On frame, um, on frame one, it's, it's at the starting point. On frame three, it jumps up a little bit. I can go back to frame, I can go to then frame six, and since I moved it up three units from the starting point, if I wanted to go below, I'd have to go three down plus three more. So if I move it six on the next one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's three units lower than the starting point. So there's a starting point here. It jumps up a little bit, jumps down. And so it's going to have its own little sort of like jumping animation happening in just five frames. I could move it a little left and right also, like it's kind of struggling or chugging along. I can move it around a little bit, left and right. What if I drew a car antenna, and every few frames I make it move a little bit back and forth? So part of that 12 principles of animation that's in the video, plus these books, is that about overlapping animation, or secondary animation, which is what else happens besides the main thing. Um, secondary animation is, okay, the car, what, the, what's a way that we represent the car is moving one way that's bumping up and down? Well, another thing is maybe the little, um, maybe there's smoke coming out. Maybe I draw a couple of frames of a little smoke coming out on its own layer. I draw a couple of puffs of smoke, and they're going to appear and disappear on their own. That's secondary to the main animation. The main animation is the jumping up and down to show movement, plus the secondary animation of the smoke. Or maybe I have an antenna. And the antenna is moving back and forth a little bit. And then when I play that, I, I drew it in a way that the height of it all and such, it has a certain style now. Then a moment ago, then I did it. It looks like it's really like, like jittering and puttering along. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. So I go back to my original um, frames. And then maybe instead of moving it up three units, I only move it up two units. If I move it down one unit, this is the thing to play with about how much to how much to move something on screen. Let's say we'll do the last thing, which is the export part of things, because when you turn in the project, you're going to turn your FLA file. And part of the reason to turn these in is to grade them, yes, but also as a backup. There's so many students that come back to our classes and, you know, even years later and say, uh, do you still have the thing I turned in that I did so amazingly, but my hard drive crashed and I lost it? Well, obviously, if you turned it in, we probably have a backup of it. So that's why I asked you turn in the FLA file to get graded, but also as a backup. Uh, but also this 
this project in Adobe Animate can be prepared to be uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook or any video site. I can share this on my Twitter and have my animation playing on Twitter, although we have to do the export process, which I'll show you right now. So let's say my animation is pretty good at this point. We'll do this export, then we'll take a break in a moment. Uh, let's do this last thing here. File, export. Well, let's do just a file save first. If you haven't saved recently, just save it first. We file export. The weird thing is we've got export movie, export video. Which one do you think we should pick? They both sound right, but the one you want is video. So export video. Export movie won't really do what, what you think at all. You want to do export video. And I have this on Canvas. It reminds you there. Go to file, export video. What I'm about to show you, it's in Canvas to remind you, but we can do it together here. Export video. Um, so this is going to create an MOV file. It says right here, uh, a movie file. The problem is that it's going to be very high quality, very, very high quality, too high usually. So we have a secondary step of converting it over here with this other software, Adobe software, to make it more compact and manageable and so forth. Now what I have found in teaching this class, I've taught this class for several years, and unfortunately when we get to this step, a lot of people have trouble, uh, especially on their own computers. Uh, if you don't have a relatively modern computer, this might take a long time. It needs to process all of these frames, all of these layers, all of this music. It needs to process them all into this file. And I have seen it throughout the years. People wait till the last minute, you know, 11.50 p.m. when it's due, and then they start to email me and I'm having trouble, and then the deadline passes. Uh, you want to make sure you're able to do this with a good amount of time. And right now, my movie is only five seconds. But when you've got a 30 second long movie, 60 second long movie, this, this could be a, a slowdown for you. And what I will say is also, possibly, if you're having trouble that this step doesn't work right away, you might have to turn off the convert, um, the convert button and, and then do export. But we'll try it this way here in terms of, we'll leave all of the defaults. It's gonna export at 1080p. We're then going to convert it, stop the export when we get to the end, saving it somewhere. So I didn't make any changes, just click export. And then just wait a moment, it's going to think about it because it looks like it won't do anything, but just keep waiting. What will happen after you export is then it should open this other Adobe software, Adobe Media Encoder, which will take the really high quality output and then compress it into a more manageable, here it is. It'll compress it to a more manageable file. It exported the MOV and it says, okay, you've got, you, you've got an MOV, let's convert it into this, well, let's take your MOV file and convert it into this MP4 file. That's the kind of file that you, you, you want in the end. And all you have to do in this complicated screen is just press the, the start button right there. And again, I wrote, I wrote these notes in Canvas, so you should be able to refer back to them or the video. Click start on that, and it'll go through your whole movie process and some more. And then it'll be done eventually, and what I get is my project. I have my original FLA file, which is only about 69 kilobytes. I get my MOV file, which is 133 kilobytes, which is 133 megabytes. And then the final, uh, the final file to turn in is only 2.7 megabytes. So you see a huge difference right there. And then when I play it, it plays like on a real sort of video where I can upload it into YouTube or Vimeo or um, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. For the assignment, you'll need to be able to show that you can do that. Not only make your animation, but do the export part here, export video. And then the conversion in Media Encoder to convert it over to a usable file. After that, you can delete if you want. If, if it takes up a lot of space, you can delete the MOV file. 
Definitely keep the FLA, of course. And then the MP4, those are the two you're turning in, the FLA and the MP4. Question? No, don't send the MOV. It's going to be huge. Oh, okay. You don't want to really work with that. You only oh, want that as an intermediary wise. file. Yes, yeah, so you want to upload onto Canvas at least your FLA. Um, in person, this is why I said also when you turn it in in person, I will take your FLA and your MP4. You don't have to upload the MP4 because that one might be huge. You don't want to upload the MOV at all. That one's going to be really huge. I don't want that file anyway. And when you turn it in, I'll, I'll take it on my flash drive, your FLA, your MP4. If you're able to turn it in on that Monday, if not, give it to me on Wednesday. But at least upload your FLA uh, to Canvas by midnight Monday next week, the, the 1st. So that was our, our lecture here. We'll have some lab time for you to keep working on your project. Wednesday will be complete lab time. I'm not going to do any lecture. You'll have the whole three hours on Wednesday to work as much as you can. Right now, take a break whenever you'd like. And um, ask for help if you need it. And then we'll be back on Wednesday for, for more work time.